Hi Sagittarius, here's your horoscope for May 2024, brought to you by planetswithin.com. I'm astrologer Joseph Anthony. All right, we have a huge month ahead. This is because we have a lot of planets in Taurus that are lining up in this sixth house, including your ruler. Now your ruler is going to be on the move this month. Jupiter will switch signs and go into the seventh house for the entire year. So guess what? Over the course of the next year, from May 2024 to 2025, May 2025, Jupiter will be in the seventh house of relationships and other people. So this could be quite beneficial for many of you, especially if you're a Sagittarius rising or sun sign Sagittarius. This is a general sun sign reading. So here we see all this activity in the sixth house, including the sun, Venus, uh, which is in Taurus as well, kind of uh, exalted in a sense. Uh, and then we have Uranus, the wild card. It's really been stirring a lot of stuff up over the last couple of years. But as we look at the month as a whole, Mars is in Aries now. So this is in the fifth house. So many of you are feeling restless or wanting to try something new or go someplace else or have some more fun or interact or, you know, just try and break out of the doldrums. And this is going to be a month that you'll have that plenty of opportunity to do that because of all these planets in the sixth house and then the second half of the month the sun venus and jupiter will all enter the seventh house so this is a great time for you guys to enjoy yourselves to socialize to interact to really break out and so it all starts with this month now while these planets are in the sixth house it has to do with work and service and daily routine and health and so many of you are focusing on maybe new health re regimens or changing up your diet. Maybe you're going to doctors or taking care of your health. If it's not you personally, maybe it's a pet or a family member or somebody else in your life that you're taking care of. And this is going to be amplified even more. If it's a new job, uh, the new moon this month is going to be in Taurus also, having to do with the sixth house. So you might find yourself uh, getting a new job, part-time, full-time, whatever works for you, or changing up your routine in some way. So this is going to be very important as well. As you can see, a lot of the planets are in this part of the uh, chart, which has a lot to do with service and taking care of and create a creativity. And of course, Saturn is still in the fourth house. So you're feeling a little restricted in some way in your feelings or in your home life. So, but let's take a little deeper dive and see what the planets have to say this month. So the first thing on the second is Pluto retrogrades in Aquarius. Now this is not going to be a big deal because this is the first retrograde of, Aquari of Pluto in Aquarius. And there it is in stationary position and it'll be backtracking, but it's, a, it's gonna be a slow backtrack out of Aquarius. It'll backtrack into Capricorn right here in September. And this is where you have to revisit things pertaining to financial matters, investments, you know, your value system. But while it's retrograde here, your mind will be taking back into the past and review. It's like a review process in the third house. So people from the past, situations in the past, things you've experienced from the past. Now, I know a lot of you have been experiencing that a lot because of Neptune and um, Saturn have been in the fourth house. The fourth house is also a doorway to the past. So very nostalgic, very, um, you know, going down memory lane. But with Pluto now retrograde, it'll absolutely continue, uh, you know, this path of we have all this new stuff coming in. But at the same time, this doorway to the past is still lingering and showing us things that we need to see that how we got to this point was the choices and the decisions we've made all along the way. And Pluto is the one uh, that has to do with deep psychological probing. And so this is what's, what it's going to do. It's going to keep reminding you about the past, okay? Just as a sort of subtle um, nuance on your subconscious. And that's how it's going to work over the next few months. Now, the new moon in Taurus on the 7th, it's going to be at 18 degrees right there. This is a golden opportunity to start a new health program, change your diet, a new job, a new routine, a new pet. You know, all of this stuff falls under this umbrella. So this is about service and health. So maybe you need to change something about what you're doing, improve your health. Maybe you need to go get a, a checkup. You know, whatever it is, it's health oriented. It's service oriented. It's work related. And it also could be that you have more responsibility at work. Maybe you've gotten a promotion and you're, you're handling so much, you know, so much work and it's overwhelming you. So you need to pay attention to your body 
because you may be stressing yourself out. But whatever it is, I see it as a positive because it is very favorably aligned to Saturn, which means you have to work for it. You're going to have to put some effort in. And, uh, you know, somewhere down the line, it'll be rewarding. And this is only a two-week transit, you know, so this cycle only lasts about two weeks up to the full moon. And that's going to be very important because it's in your sign this month. Mercury also enters Taurus on the 15th. There it is. So we have four, uh, excuse me, five planets in the sixth house. So this has a lot to do with the same thing I just mentioned, except with Mercury in, in Taurus, it's a little more methodical, slower pace where you're evaluating everything, you're thinking about everything, you know, you're taking your time and you're processing everything at a slower rate, which is totally normal. And so uh, Mercury in Taurus tends to enjoy itself more. So maybe, you know, you slow down and maybe have a nice dinner or, you know, you, you, you uh, smell the flowers and, and you appreciate life a little bit more. Where Mars, uh, where Mercury in Aries is all about go, 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 go and moving forward, where Mercury, uh, Mercury in Taurus is about appreciating uh, what you have. Now, there are some wonderful alignments coming in on the 18th. Jupiter conjunct Uranus in Taurus right there. Okay, it actually happens earlier in the day, but it's a conjunction nonetheless. At the same time, your ruler, Jupiter, is conjunct the sun right there. So Venus is conjunct Uranus, and Jupiter is conjunct the sun. So talk about a wonderful alignment that's occurring here. Now, this is a very lucky, fortuitous alignment, especially when we have the sun and Jupiter together. This could be very euphoric and happy. Maybe something comes through at work that, it, that you're elated about. Or maybe something to do with your health. You, you've lost a whole bunch of weight and you just feel great. Uh, you know, maybe there's some money that comes in from your job unexpectedly. Whatever it is, it seems to be on a larger scale. Okay, maybe some sort of realization of, you know, where you've been and what you've been up to. And, and you're so grateful for everything in your life. This is all positive energy and news. So no matter what happens in the news itself trying to, you know, scare the crap out of everyone, don't buy into it. And so this is going to be a very uh, strong, wonderful alignment for many of you. And it's a couple of days, but it also spills into you guys uh, into the Gemini energy because the sun is now entering the seventh house, which has a lot to do with other people. And so you're feeling much more uh, social and a need to interact and converse and express yourself in a bigger way when the sun is in Gemini because Gemini is your opposite sign. And so you find yourself just wanting to talk and wanting to engage in conversation and wanting to be around other people. So maybe you're going to an event and there's a lot of socializing involved. So the sun over the next 30 days is going to be really good for many of you to interact and have some more fun. So I say go for it. Now, the full moon in Sagittarius, on the other hand, on the 23rd is in your sign in the first house. It's going to be at two degrees of Sagittarius. So wherever that is in your actual birth chart. That's the area that gets uh, highlighted. But in the first house of identity and self, it is coming to some sort of realization or understanding of who you are, what you've been through, you know, your appearance, your identity, your self-worth, uh, may have something to do with politics and your belief systems, you know, your philosophy on life, because that's what Sagittarius is associated with. So you're questioning all of it. Where have I been? This has been amazing. I can't believe this is happening. I, it's, it's incredible. And so this is all going to continue to be highlighted for many of you. And so it's just, it's really just a deep realization about yourself. And as I say in all of my videos, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. That's the bottom line. No matter what you think you are, that's the core of our, you know, our, our, ourselves. So when you understand that, you live from that perspective, life gets a little easier. All right, now Venus enters Gemini on the 23rd, right there at the same time later on after that full moon. And again, amplifying more sociability, more interacting with others, having more fun, uh, you know, relationship oriented mindset. Uh, ha just get out there, social, socialize, mingle. You know, you're one of the signs that loves to socialize and mingle. So there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. OK, uh, very important. And so uh, this whole next six weeks or so is going to be very important for many of you to socialize, interact and so on. So I say enjoy it because Venus and the Sun are going to be in uh, fantastic alignments uh, the second half of the month. But wait, the last alignment of the month is the Jupiter entering Gemini on the 25th. So talk about having your ruler now in the seventh house of relationships and other people for a whole year. 
So from May 2024 to May 2025, Jupiter will be in the seventh house, bringing people to you, socializing, gatherings, events, you know, uh, connections with others, romance, if that's what you're looking for. Uh, it will be very positive. And so you're going to have a golden opportunity this entire year, beginning in, in May, to start drawing people to you or, you know, socializing get out and interact with more people that you find interesting and charming and want to just know and want to socialize and want to get to know uh, on some level. Uh, it could be that you're teaching others or they're teaching you and education may be very important for you because uh, education is always important to Sagittarians. And so you might be getting out there and just mingling and, and getting to know more people in, on some level. So whatever it is, lots of socializing coming your way. So I would say, you know, embrace it all and see where it takes you. All right. So there you have it, Sagittarius. Have a fabulous month and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now.